Hello and welcome to lesson 1.3 in the Python tutorial series 2.0. We are going to continue looking at for loops and today we're going to be looking at how for loops uh, execute over list values. We've already seen how they work with strings, we've already seen how they work with numerical values, and so what we're going to do today is take a quick look at how you would iterate over a list what kind of values those return, and then we'll probably write a short program or a short function that uses some of these concepts um, to give you an idea of ways that you could integrate this into maybe some of the text-based games that we've been writing throughout this whole series. So let's go ahead and head into the programming environment and take a look at how for loops work with list values. Okay, so here we are in our programming environment. And to get us started, I just want to create a variable that contains a uh, list data type. So let's create a variable called myList, and we'll put in four elements to this list. Um, we'll put a dog, a cat, a bunny, and uh, a dragon in there. So now we've got a variable that has a list with four elements. And then as we've done in the previous videos, let's go ahead and write a for loop. So we'll say for i in my list. And we'll simply print the value of i. When I run this program right here, you can see that it's going to print off dog, cat, bunny, and dragon. So really what you need to know about lists is when you iterate over a list, each element of the list, in this case the string dog, the string cat, the string bunny, uh, those are what get popped in for the value of i, whereas a, a string will go over individual characters of a string, a list value will pull the entire element of a list. And that's a pretty, uh, that concept is pretty consistent through most of Python as we've been working with list variables, so that shouldn't seem like really that, uh, that different than what you're used to. So maybe a, a better question would be, how can we use these for loops in an actual program? So far, lessons 1.1 and 1.2 have been a lot of examples, but uh, nothing concrete in how you would use them in a program. So let's go ahead and write a quick program here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to import the random uh, module. And so what I'm thinking for this example is, um, Let's imagine we have a uh, person that's stuck in a room, and in order to get out of the room, they need a key. So we're going to want to give them the ability to search the room, try and find a key, and maybe check their inventory. And we've done that in previous lessons before, but just so you can see it work, we'll, uh, we'll create a little game loop here that says while true. And I'm going to define a new function called print menu. And the print menu command will just uh, print some of the things that our user can do. So we'll start by kind of printing a, a header line here. And I want my user to be able to search the room. I want my user to be able to check their inventory. And I'd like my user to be able to try and escape. And we'll uh, close it off with kind of a, a footer there. And so I've got a little print menu function, and I'll put this in my uh, while loop. We'll start off by uh, printing the menu. And we'll just do a quick uh, input line there so that we can pause the program. And we'll add some more content to this. But if I run this program right now, I, I should see it uh, print a menu and really nothing else. So that's, uh, that's kind of where we're uh, going with this program. Uh, I, I think I want to make a quick change to my print menu thing here. Uh, my print menu function, I'll probably want to get a response from the user as well. So we'll set response equal to the input value of make your selection. Maybe we'll put a, a new line there. And then we'll return the user's response. So that gives print menu just a, a little bit more value to us because not only are we printing a menu, but we're having the user input their response. That means down here in our game loop, we're going to have to set response equal to 
of the return value. Let's go ahead and test this program and see how it's working right now. Okay, our menu is popping up okay. It's asking us to make a selection. Um, it's not really doing a, a whole lot else. Um, now that we have this input line here, I can erase this input line in my while true. And while the program doesn't do anything right now, we, we have a menu popping up and we can make a selection. So we're, we're kind of in a good spot going forward. Let's start adding some of our checks to this program. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a uh, search function. And this is where I'm going to use random. I, I want the user to have, let's, let's give them a 25% chance of finding a key. So we'll do uh, number equals random.randint, a value between 1 and 100. And if the number is less than or equal to 25, we'll return the string key. If the number is greater than 25 and the number is less than or equal to 75, we'll return, uh, what do we want to, to find most often? We'll have them find dirt. And if the number is greater than 75, we'll return and we'll have them find um, broken glass. As you can tell, I didn't really think this program out too much, but really what we want to do is just have the user be able to search multiple times and maybe they get a key, maybe they don't. We can even add some print statements in here. So we can print, you found a, and we'll make it obvious what they found, you found a key we'll have this you found dirt and this will print you found and what did we go with uh, broken glass now I may want to have a, a number of different choices here but this kind of gives our program uh, enough that we can use it to see how we'll integrate a for loop into this program and before we do that, one of the other things I want to do is just have my program initialize with an inventory uh, list for our player so that we can collect uh, what they've grabbed in somewhere. And instead of returning key, we'll have search uh, inventory.append a key. And this will inventory.append dirt. And this will inventory.append, and we'll just go with uh, glass. And that way uh, we can actually keep track a little bit better of what the user is uh, picking up. Now what we have to do is we have to go into our while loop here and actually add a check to see um, when the user presses S, have it run our search function. So we'll add a quick if statement here and we'll say if response equals uh, S, and up here, we'll go ahead and force the user into an uppercase answer so that we only have to make one check here for a capital S. So I'm going to add the uh, dot upper method to the user's response. And if the response is an uppercase S, we'll just simply run that search function. The other thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and create a new function called check inventory. And what this will do is we'll print a, a statement. You have the following items in your inventory. And this is the first uh, time we're going to have a for loop in here. And then we'll say for i in, in inventory print i. So now when we check our inventory, it's going to print that it's uh, we have the following items. And then we'll go through our inventory line by line and print those out for the user. Down here, we'll say if the user's response is equal, and make sure you have two equal signs, this would have caused a little syntax error here. Um, if the response is equal to a C for check inventory, we'll run the check inventory function. 
So we should be able to give our program a little bit of a test run here. Um, our menu comes up, and let's check our inventory. Oh, I misspelled check inventory. Should have caught that. Let's, uh, let's fix that real quick and uh, try it again. When I hit C for check inventory, it says you have the following items in your inventory. Now, I don't like the way that's printing, so real quick, let's go ahead and add a couple escape sequences just to uh, give our menu a little bit of a break. And check our inventory again. You have the following items in your inventory. We have nothing. If we now search the room, we found a key. And if we check our inventory, it prints out our key. And we can keep searching the room. We found dirt. We found more dirt. We found another key. When we check our inventory, we have a key, dirt, dirt, and key. So from a functional standpoint right now, uh, our program is is working. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and we have to work with some of the formatting and stuff, but in concept here, our program is working. Our user can search the room, and they can check their inventory. Of course, there's still one thing we have to add to our program, that's try to escape. What we'll do is create a new function called escape. And for right now, I'm just going to pass that because I want to add if response equals t, then we're going to run escape. And the way our escape function is going to work is we are going to have the escape function look through the player's inventory and see if they have a key in their inventory. And actually, one of the things I want to do is I want to make this uh, function right here return true or false. Either you can escape or you can't. So let's uh, change this and just say, if the player can escape, then we'll return, or not return because it's not a function, we'll print, you have escaped the room, good job. And we'll print the end. And if you can't escape, we'll print, you haven't found the key, you are still stuck. So now what we need is this function to return a true or false value. And the way we'll start doing this is for i in inventory, we will look at everything in the player's inventory and evaluate it one by one. The first check we'll make is if i is equal to a key, then we'll return true. Now remember the nature of uh, return statements inside a uh, user-defined function. Once we have hit a return value, that breaks the function completely. And that holds true for for loops as well. The second we return true, this function will stop evaluating anything else in the inventory. If the player has two pieces of dirt, a key, and a piece of broken glass, the moment this function finds the key, it'll return true, and the function will never see the glass in the player's inventory. What that means is one of the common mistakes that you might end up making is saying something like return false here. If the user has a key, return true, otherwise return false. If we were to run this program right now, there would be kind of a bug in it that might be hard to catch. So if we were to test this program, if we check our inventory, we can see there's nothing there. If we try and escape, it tells us we haven't found the key, we're still stuck. If we search the room, we find broken glass. We try and escape, we're still stuck. We search the room, and we'll search until we find a key. So now we have a key in our inventory, and we can verify that by checking our inventory. But if we try to escape the room right now, it's going to tell us we haven't found the key and we're still stuck. The reason is, the way we, we've set up this escape function right now is we're going to return true or false on the first value regardless of what it is. Since the user's first item was a piece of dirt, it's going to say for i in inventory, i is going to equal dirt. If i equals key, which it doesn't, 
we're not going to return true. So that means in every other case, we'll return false. As soon as we return a value of false, it stops evaluating the rest of the player's inventory. The way we can get around that is simply taking out the else statement and having this return false outside of the for loop. What this will end up doing is we will evaluate everything in the player's inventory. If we find a key, we'll return true. And if we've gone through the entire player's inventory and we haven't found a key, this for loop will then execute the next line of code. In this case, it's a return false. That will allow our program to properly check the player's inventory. So let's go ahead and run it again. Let's search. We found dirt. We try and escape. No good. We continue searching until we find a key. We have now located a key. We check our inventory. We can see the key is the third item in our inventory list. And if we try and escape, we have escaped the room. Good job. And of course, the game is still continuing because I need to put a break here if the escape is successful. So that little program right there shows you a couple ways that you can use for loops uh, and lists in your programs. We did it a couple of ways here. We had the iteration over the inventory for printing out the player's inventory, and we had the iteration over the player's inventory to determine whether or not they have located the key. Now, truth be told, you could write this program without a for loop, and those of you who've been following the series for a while could write this exact same program never encountering a for loop. But you do want to get better at it, and you do want to practice these for loops, particularly when we get into graphics, because for loops are super important. So that's kind of an efficient way that we can run a little menu-based adventure program using for loops. And that's going to do it for Lesson 1.3 in the Python tutorial series. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how the for loop works, how it iterates over a list variable, and how you can integrate that into some of the programs that you've probably already become kind of adept at writing, um, but write them in a different way using for loops. As we move forward, we're going to be looking at um, pairing the for loop with the time module to make the presentation of these text-based adventure games that we've been making uh, a little bit cooler for our end user. So when we move on to lesson 2.1, we will be looking at how to integrate the time module and for loops together to change the presentation of our programs. Uh, of course, if you have any questions about this or anything you've seen in these videos before, please leave those questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer everything for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching the Python Tutorial Series 2.0 and have a great night.